Thank you for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed today's service. God is using the ministry of Lakeside to make a difference in many people's lives, and we have heard numerous stories of life change. If God has used the ministry of Lakeside to make a difference in your life, we would love to hear your story. Please email us at amen at lakesidechurch.ca. Well, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here in this room and those of you who are watching online, those of you in the cafe, so glad that you have joined us. My gift, my sacrifice for Mother's Day to all mothers today is country music. We just had it. It's my gift to you. There you go. I think before we jump into the remarks I want to share with you today, I think we're just going to pause in our service and pray. Father God, we just, uh, I thank you for my mom. I thank you for uh, the way that she uh, poured herself into the life of our family. Uh, she uh, just cared and sacrificed so much. I thank you for my wife, who is a great mother to our three girls, and I, Lord, I just uh, thank you for all mothers here today. But Father, I'm aware that as we approach Mother's Day, for some it is a very difficult day. For some who desire to be mothers, and that, that just isn't happening, and there's heartbreak, and I pray for those. Pray for those who have lost their mothers, because they have stepped from this life to the next. And I pray for all who uh, wrestle through relational dynamics that are less than what they desire with that one they call mother. And so for those who are in this audience that feel sometimes the challenges of these days, I pray that you would speak even to them today and bring comfort and bring uh, just a sense of your presence to them. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is Mother's Day, and this is the day where we celebrate those people in our lives that we call mom. And it could be, you know, biological mothers, it could be stepmothers, it could be uh, adopted mothers, it could be single moms, whatever that configuration is. This is the day that we celebrate mothers. And although this is Mother's Day, I'm going to take a little bit of a risk, and I'm not going to speak to mothers today. I'm not going to give you any biblical advice or any biblical wisdom on how to be a better mother. That's not what I'm going to do today. In fact, I'm going to take my remarks, and I'm going to push them in a different direction. And I hope that you will uh, allow me to do that today, moms, because I believe at the end of the day, this is really going to benefit moms. What I want to do today is address what I want to say to everybody who is a kid, everyone who is a kid. Now, how would I define kids? I would define kids, if you have parents who are still living, then you are a kid. So I think there are lots of kids in this room today. There'll be a few, I understand, where you know, mom or mom and dad have stepped from this life to the next. But for the majority of us, I think that, there's a, that we have parents still living, we still are kids, and this is instruction for you kids, for me as a kid today. And I want to focus on the clearest instruction that God gave for all kids in the Bible. And it's found in one simple or single phrase that I want to share with you today. And no matter what age you are and no matter what stage of life you're at, this is, instruction is for you because it's not bound by age and it's not bound by stage. It is a instruction for everyone who has a mother and a father. There's no distinction when it comes to age on this one. And there are no direct instructions either. There's no do this, do that, because it's different for all families. But God gives clear instruction for all of us who are kids. And when I show you this instruction, some of you are going to find these some of the most difficult words in the Bible to play out and to live out in your life. The writer Paul is finishing a letter to a, a group of people who are in a city called Ephesus, and he is writing, and he's giving them some family instruction. He's talked about husbands and wives and their relationships together. He talks about submission and sacrifice, and now he turns his attention not from husband and wife, but to kids. And this is what he says. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And here's the instruction. Here's the instruction that he gives for all of us who are kids here today. Honor your father and mother. That's the instruction. Honor your father and mother. He says this is the first commandment with a promise. He's talking about these words coming from the Ten Commandments, originally given to God or by God to Moses thousands of years earlier. 
and there is this promise, and then he says these words, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. And what he's saying is that it's not a promise that if you honor your mother and father that you will have a long life. It is not a promise that things will go well with you. This is a kind of a proverb-like statement that somebody wise looked down over you know, the landscape of human relationships and said, I've watched people who honor their mother and father and it does go well for them and they seem to live a longer life. They seem to live a longer life. So these are the simple instructions. He's saying the general outcome of most people's lives, if they do this, this instruction by God to honor your father and mother, that the general observation is that life goes well with them and that they enjoy a long life. One other writer says that they live a full and blessed life. He's saying if you follow the instruction to honor your mother and father, then it makes a difference in the way you live your life. Now, we know that he refers to here the commandment with promise. He's going back to the Ten Commandments, but we wonder, what did Jesus say about this? Jesus doesn't seem to say, oh, there's something different, there's something new. In fact, Jesus seems to high-five this. And a number of times, Jesus reiterates this and doesn't add anything new. So Jesus' instruction to all of us today is to honor our father and mother. And there's no age limit. There's no age distinction. There's no stage of life where you don't get to do this. No matter if you have moms and dads, then you are to honor your mother and father. Now, to move forward and to understand this, we need to understand what honor really means. In the original language the Bible was written, it means to esteem, to value, to revere, or to respect, not because of what a person does or doesn't do, but because of the station or the office or the position they hold. Whatever their title is, certain titles require honor. And he's saying one of those titles that requires honor is mom or dad. Whether they earn it or not, you're still to do it. Honor your mother and father. There's no fine print, no loopholes, no exception clause given. Now, I know some of you are sitting here today, and as soon as I hear, you hear those words, honor your mother and father, because that's the commandment, right? That's what we're to do. Honor your father and mother. And when you hear that today, you kind of bristle. Some of you feel angry. Some of you still feel the wounds. Some of you feel the pain. And you think to yourself, I can't do it. There's no way possible. My parents, my mother, my father, they wounded me so badly. They loved me so little. There was anger and abuse, and they controlled and manipulated my life. And, and I feel wrecked because of it, and I still bear the scars as a result of it. And David, you know what? If this is what God wants, this is one of those commands in his word, his instruction, I'm going to disobey because I just cannot honor my mother and father. Well, let me speak into that for a moment before we move on to what I really want to say today. Parents have a responsibility to their kids, to love them, to nurture them, to provide for them, to guide, to instruct, to discipline. And the Bible says a lot about how parents are to act, and the Bible has a lot to say about when parents do, do that well, when they do not fulfill their responsibility, it always seems to lead to negative consequences in their lives and the lives of their children. Parenting, we have been given the responsibility by God, those of us who are parents. And the levels of honor and the actions of honor and how you honor are different based on how your parents fulfilled that responsibility that God had given them. However, you are still to honor your mother and father. The more honorable a parent is, the more honor they are due or they should receive. And sometimes, because of what went on in our homes in the past, we may need to honor at a distance. Sometimes we have to honor in limited ways. Sometimes we have to honor, and there is no relational connection, but we still have to honor. Honoring a parent does not deny the hurt and the wounds that happened. It doesn't mean that you don't keep good boundaries in place. It doesn't mean that we make ourselves vulnerable to wounding and hurtful behavior all over again. Honoring takes different forms in different ages and different stages depending on the different circumstances and the different dynamics of a family. But we are still to honor our mother and father. That's what we're to do. You know, I, I find Mother's Day and Father's Day sometimes hard messages to put together because I know that in the room there are people who feel pain when it comes to the word mother or to the words father. 
But what I want to say, before I say really what I want to say, is I want to just talk just briefly, if I could, to all of you who might have been deeply hurt, wounded or abused, neglected or not loved by a parent or parents. To those who feel like, oh, today, what I went through, it is impossible to honor my mother and father. I want to show you some ways that you can still honor your mother and father, even when the circumstances were so far from perfect. And now let me just give you some real brief insights. And there's a little space. And, you, and, and if this isn't you, still write them down because you will bump into somebody where this is their story. So the first thing that, let me just, I wanted to say one more thing before I go. It says, this is what honor is. It's being respectful in words and actions and having an internal attitude of esteem for the position of whatever that is. So, for those of you who struggle, number one, don't deny what happened. If you struggle with what's going on in the life of, 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 with your parents in that relationship, and it's, it's fractured and it's fragmented, don't deny what's happened. Don't bury it. Don't repress it. Don't make excuses for your mom and dad. Just because you, 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 you talk about it and you're honest about it does not dishonor them. In fact, that brings honor to the situation when you're able to talk about it. So don't deny it. Secondly, express the emotions. Sometimes there's anger and sometimes there's frustration and sometimes there's hurts and wounds. And we need the opportunity to do that if that's your situation today. You might need to find a confidant or a close friend or a Christian counselor. The third, choose to forgive. Choose to forgive, no matter how bad it is or was. Choose to forgive, not for their sake, but for your sake, because forgiveness frees us, and the people who wound us no longer get to wound us when we choose to forgive. Third, next, make peace if possible. If there is an option and there is an opportunity, and it wouldn't be more hurtful or more destructive, and you can make peace with your parents, I encourage you to do that. That is a way that we honor. Now, peace looks different depending on the dynamics of family relationships. But I encourage you to make peace if possible. Next, show respect and be civil and kind. When you have social interaction with your mother or father or both, even though there has been pain in the past, I encourage you as children, kids, show respect and be civil and be kind, even if they're not. Next, honor what they did right. I mean, they might have done a lot of things wrong, but honor the things that they did right and acknowledge the sacrifices they have made, no matter how bad the rest might have been. And the last one, I think this is the most important for people who've been wounded in family environments. The best way they can honor is this one. Break the cycle. You know, it's easy to let wounds linger and fester. It's easy to pack a bag full of hurts and wounds, and then we carry that bag, and then in our current relationship with a spouse and with our children, we begin to unpack that bag. The best way if you have been in a difficult situation to the, with those who have called, you call mother or father, the best way you can honor them is this. Break the cycle. Do not pass on what went on. But break the cycle and bring freedom. Now, to the rest of us who feel, you know what, we had good parents, maybe even great parents. How do we carry out the instructions to honor our mother and father? Well, some of you are saying, yeah, I had okay parents. I think they were good parents. They weren't perfect. Guess what? No parents are. You are not the offspring of Superman and Wonder Woman. You are not. None of our parents are perfect. And those of you who are parents today, you know that to be true. You are not perfect. We may have great parents, but they weren't perfect parents. And their imperfections will affect us in some ways. They will. Their imperfections will affect us. I had great parents, wonderful parents. Spent Friday night with them kind of honoring my mother and my mother-in-law and uh, my father and, and father-in-law. And as I was there, I was thinking about just things of the past. I had great parents. But my parents somehow tied love and affection with performance. That's just they did. They didn't know they were doing it. They didn't do it intentionally, but they did. And it kind of put me on that treadmill of wanting to always please people and being performance-driven. And it kind of affected me. And it kind of messed me a little bit, messed me up a little bit. But they were still great parents. My parents, in, in, in the early years of their marriage, when I was just a young boy, probably in, you know, eight to ten years old, because of difficult, challenging life circumstances that they faced, um, their marriage was rocky. And I felt like I was the one that had to keep it together. And today, I still wrestle with that, wanting to fix people's problems. But I had great parents, and they weren't perfect parents, and no parents are perfect. 
And we need to honor our parents no matter where they are on that scale. We don't have an excuse. We can't say, well, they didn't get this right or they affected me this way. Uh Uh-uh. We don't have that excuse. There is no exception clause. We are to honor our mother and father. There are no loopholes. It is not based on age, and it's not based on stage of life. So I want to talk about how we can do that today. And I'm going to kind of break us down into three age groups. Now, there's not many in the first age group, so I'll kind of do it as a bank shot, and we'll move on. The first group is children 0 to 15. Now, that's kind of arbitrary. I'm kind of looking to the end of grade 8, might be 14, but kind of in that zone. Here's how children, children honor their parents, their mother and father. It's this way. It's this. It's obedience. It's all about obedience. That's how children honor their mother and father. It says this in Ephesians 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Why? Because it's right. Now, He's saying, children, obey your parents in the Lord. I have heard this taught improperly. I've heard people say, as long as your parents obey the Lord and they do things that are godly, then you have to obey them. That's not what this means. It means, children, obey your parents because you're in the Lord. As a, res- as a, a, a result of your relationship with Jesus, kids, you are to obey your parents. It flows from the relationship with Christ. For he says, this is the right thing to do. This is the right thing to do. God has placed parents in authority over their children. It's the way he set it up. It's his system. But we need to understand that biblical authority is not about domination. It is not about manipulation. It is not about control. It's not about my way or the highway in an unkind or un, you know, gracious, uh, ungracious spirit. When you look at the idea of authority in the Bible and you use Jesus as the example, When you look at the idea of authority, it comes with love and grace and sacrifice. And in parents, we have authority, but that's got to flow through the authority. See, parents are responsible to have this authority over their children, and they are to give them clear guidelines and expectations of how to do life. They are to provide reasons why they want their kids to do something. Parents, I know some of you will disagree. They need to know why, especially as they can understand it as they get a little bit older. Thirdly, there needs to be defined consequences if these guidelines and expectations are net, not met, and then the, you need to provide firm but fair discipline, allowing the consequences to play out. Here's the deal. I watch parents who don't live by those four things. They don't exercise loving and gracious authority. They're more worried about their kids being their friends than they are worried about being the authority figures in their life. And they don't, parents are afraid that their kids won't like them because they say no or they enact discipline. They're, they're not really, the primary purpose is not that they'll like you. It's that they will learn authority. Because if you don't le- teach them authority, they will go through a life of not knowing how to respond to authority. Teachers, bosses, youth leaders, civil authorities, We learn authority from our parents when they do it well with love and graciousness and sacrifice. Parents have been given the responsibility to have authority over their children, and children honor their parents through obedience. Let's go to the next stage, young adults. I wrote in my notes, this is anybody sort of 16 to when you move out of the house. That's kind of a moving target. I don't know if it counts when you come back or not, but it's at least it... It's a moving target. How do young adults, all of you young adults between 16 and kind of out on your own, how do you honor your mother and father? Here it is. Here it is. By listening to and respecting their insight and wisdom. And even more importantly, following through and making wise choices and decisions. Now, this is kind of a dimmer, dimmer switch deal. You know, they don't turn 16 and go, okay, the game changes. Everything changes. There's less requirement for obedience in that purest sense and more requirement of mom and dad to walk along with their kids and give them wisdom and insight and guidance, and then the kids are to follow that, respect that, listen to it, and then become wise decision makers. Proverbs is all about this. The book of Proverbs is all about this. Proverbs 1, 8 to 9 says, listen, my son, could be, listen, my son and daughter, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They will be garland to grace your head. This is talking about they will make you like royalty and a chain to adorn your neck. They will, there's, there's something very special about this, very special about this. 
when you read through chapters 2 to 7 of Proverbs, it's all about the wisest man that ever lived saying to these sons and daughters, listen, listen, listen to their wisdom and insight and instruction. Because when you do that and you make the right choices because of that, you live a good life. There are so many benefits. And I'm, I'm telling you, if you're a young adult here today and you're between zero and out of the house, no, sorry, 16 and out of the house, I encourage you to read Proverbs 2 to 7 and make a list of all of the benefits of listening to the instruction and the wisdom and the guidance of your parents and then making wise choices based on it. Let me just give you a couple examples. It says, my son and daughter, Keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For these commands are like a lamp. This teaching is a light. And the corrections of discipline are a way of life. They're the way of life. They are the way to life, really. They lead to life. That's what he says. You want to have a good life? This is kind of what the instruction is. Listen to the advice and wisdom and the guidance of your parents and make wise choices. It says in this other text, my son and daughter, pray, you know, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to a man or woman's whole body. The ultimate goal of parenting in this stage is to help our sons and daughters become wise decision makers. Parents who demand obedience at this stage but are not willing to pour into their children wisdom, guidance, and instruction, just saying, you got to do it this way and you got to do it that way. This is a road to rebellion. A parent's role is to take time and to make time to share wisdom, insight, and guidance with their kids. And I know we live in a crazy world, and it is easy to hydroplane over the relationships. I think sometimes parents think, well, as long as they're 0 to 15, I need more time. But when they get older, I can spend less time. Actually, I think you need to spend as much, if not more time, pouring instruction, guidance, and wisdom into your children. Because if not, it leads to all sorts of relational fallout. If you've got to choose something because of busyness, don't choose pouring instruction, guidance, and wisdom into your young adults. But this can be a tough time for families, can it? Because children are moving from independence to eventually interdependence, but there's a stage called independence that gets in the way. And all, you know, that's, that's amazing, but all kids from the beginning of time believe their parents haven't got a clue what it's like to be a young adult. Right from the beginning. I'm sure Cain and Abel said to Adam and Eve, well, well, you don't get it. And I guess they didn't because they weren't young adults. There's this old saying that says, when I was 16, my parents didn't have, they didn't know nothing. When I turned 21, I was surprised how much they learned in five years. And this is a season of friction in families. It is. Friction. Kind of doing battle over what are you going to do with your life? Over the people you hang out with, over certain choices and decisions, over the future, over music, over hairstyles, over clothing styles, over how they drive the car. And at the heart of it during this stage, all parents have the very best in mind for their young adults. The problem is, is the young adults aren't sure at that season that it's the best. But to shun young adult wisdom and insight is to dishonor your mother and father. It affects your health and it affects your life. Now, I know you can't believe if you're this age that your parents understand what it's like to be a young adult. I know you just believe that they were 20 and they were born and they didn't experience it, but they did. They did. And parents have made their fair share of mistakes. I've never told my kids the mistakes I've made, some of them, but not all of them, because I don't want them to try anything brand new and give them any ideas. But I've been through it, and parents, we've been through it, and young adults, they've been through it, and they just care about you, and they love you, and they want the very best for you. And honoring your mother and father as a young adult is about patiently respecting and listening to their advice and insight and wisdom and applying it to the wise decisions that you need to make. I don't think there's a better thing 
that where parents feel more honored, that when they're young adult children make wise decisions and choices based on the advice and wisdom they were given. I think it just feels like, oh, that is so good. That's how we honor as young adults. Now, the third group I want to talk about is adults. That's all the rest of us. Kind of, you're married or not, or you have kids of your own or you don't, but now you're living independently on, of, on your own. And then I wrote this line, not relying on any financial provision from your parents. That's kind of how you know you move into adult world. You're no longer taking too much cash. I say too much. You might take a little. Honor is no longer about obedience. Parents, if you have adult children who are on their own, married or not, or, not, or have children or not, no longer do they have to obey you, so stop pushing that one. Secondly, it's not a, so much about listening, respecting advice and insight and wisdom, although I think at times in major decision points, it's wise to go to your mom and dad and to talk to them about it. But honor really changes at this stage. It really does. And I just want to talk briefly about three ways that adults honor their parents, all of us who are adults. The first one is this. It's gratitude. It's just being grateful for who they are and what they've done in your life. I mean, it's not easy being a parent, and some of you who have kids, you're finding that to be true, right? It's not easy. It takes time and energy and emotion and patience. It can be all-consuming, all-demanding, and it brings wear and tear. And I think gray hair comes from parenting. I'm convinced of that. And I think the worse kids are, the more gray hair and the more intense it is in the parent's head. My mother was gray by the time she was 30. It tells you what kind of kids we were. And I think I added a lot to it. I mean, when I came home and told my parents that I'd driven their car into the back of a parked car because I was horsing around with my friends, I think they got some gray hair. When I came home not long after that and said I got suspended from school because I did something kind of crazy and stupid, I think a few more gray hair. When I broke curfew and I was with people that I, they didn't want me with doing things they didn't want me to do, I think it was a little more gray hair. Parenting is not easy. And those of us who are adults need to be grateful to our parents for what they've done and for what they went through. I mean, you should be grateful to your parents that they put up with you. I mean, who else would? You should be grateful that they provided for your needs, that they were there on weekends to take you to sports tournaments, dance recitals, piano lessons, up early for practices and games. You should be for grateful for the vacations you took together, the special presents they gave on special occasions. You should be grateful for their wisdom and insight and guidance. But in a world where entitlement is so pervasive, we think that we're entitled to this and we deserve this, we need to learn to be grateful for it. I mean, when was the last time, in word or in action, that you told your parents how grateful you are for them? It's the way, one of the ways we honor our parents as adults, is we're grateful. I mean, parenting involves sacrifice, and moms are especially good at this. I, I researched this. It said the, co the cost to raise a child from zero to 18 costs $250,000. I mean, you could buy a lot of good stuff with that. Big sacrifice. I think people who have three and four kids, like, that's like getting close to the million dollars. Rick Warren says this. I love his definition of a parent. He said, that's a person who has pictures in their wallet where they once had money. <laughs> Parents sacrifice and go without so their kids don't have to. You know, when I was, I think I was about 14, and all of my friends at school were going to this soccer game, a whole bunch of my friends, and it was going to cost like 10 or $12 to go. And it was in Toronto we were living at the time. And I remember saying to my mom and dad, I wanted to go, and my dad said, we can't afford it. My, my, my parents, uh, we were, my dad was back at school, my mom was working, but there wasn't much money at all. And I was just kind of really rotten about this. And I sulked and cried and whined, and I wouldn't talk to them. And a few days later, my mom said, you know what? We found the money for you to go to that soccer game. And so I was delighted and, you know, kind of off I went with my friends and had a great time. And I remember the next morning telling my mom how good was, it was. And my mom said these words. Your dad went out without lunch all week so you could go to that soccer game. Now, that's what parents do. When was, your, when was the last time we thanked our parents for the sacrifices they made 
for the sacrifice of time, of sleep, of their cars when you turn 16. You know, they sacrificed going on rides on amusement parks where they puked afterwards. I mean, they sacrificed their own desires, their own wants, and sometimes their own priorities. I think sometimes when we're, you know, young adults, we don't understand how much our kids or our parents sacrifice for us. And maybe it's time to write a card or it's to write a note and say to mom and dad, hey, thanks for all you've done. Thank you for the sacrifices made. Thank you for who you are and who you've made me. The second one is graciousness. Now, I'm a parent with, I'm, I'm a, a, ch- a kid with adult aging parents. And I don't know, but sometimes your parents can drive you nuts. Like, they just can. My parents can drive me crazy. No amens? They're okay. I mean, my parents still want to give me advice and wisdom, and they expect me to follow it. They still treat me like I'm their little child, even though I have children and now grandchildren. And they want to protect and provide, and they want nothing bad to happen to me, and they worry about me. And how you respond is all about honor when they want to do that. Are you gracious? Are you gracious? You see, there's a couple of things that all of us here today need to remember. Here's the first one. You will be them someday. And the same thing that they do to you, you'll do to your kids. I know you vow. It will never happen. Yes, it will. It will. I'm driving my kids crazy right now as my parents drove me crazy. So one day you're going to be them. And the second thing is, is that once a parent, always a parent, you never stop parenting, no matter how old you are. I remember about six years ago, it was Monday, and pastors have terrible Mondays. You come off this emotional roller coaster on the weekend, and you get emails that aren't always that positive, and you look forward to the week, and you got all this stuff going on, and you kind of think, oh man, I'm, I'm done. I can't take this ministry deal anymore. Monday is the day most pastors, I think, quit. And then they rehire themselves on Tuesday. <laughs> and my dad called me on a Monday. It had been a bad weekend. I can't remember what went on. And, and he just said, oh, how's thing going? And man, that was just like, I'm just going to pour on him. And I just did. And I shared all the frustrations and disappointments and things I was feeling. And he was done. Off he went and off I went. Tuesday morning, I woke up, felt great. It was Tuesday. And I remember Friday came. And I got this phone call from my dad. And he said, how are you? And I was wondering why the tone of the voice. And I said, what do you mean, how am I? He goes, how's you, you know, man, I talked to you Monday. And I've been worried sick about you all week. I said, Dad, I'm 50 years old. It's time for you to stop worrying. But I remember that once a parent, I was a parent, and I still worry about my adult children. And I'm sure I'm driving my kids crazy. You know, I think I'm doing the same thing to my kids that my dad did to me. And they're adults. They're married. They have their own children. They keep moving back in for a while. Oh, did I say that out loud? (laughs) And I treat them like kids, and I worry about them. And I become my dad all over, and I vowed I would never do it. And at times, when your parents give you wisdom or guidance and advice, I know you want to say to them, mind your own business. I don't need your advice. Let me do it my way. Stop interfering. You maybe have others you say. Parents in the stage is about being gracious because you're going to be them one day. And you want the same graciousness. And once a parent, always a parent. And we need to do this well. Because here's, and and we need to do it not just in their presence. When your parents phone you on the phone or they say something and you get off the phone and you say in front of your kids, they drive me alone, which they'd mind their own business. I'm going to tell you that you do that and dishonor your parents. Watch out. Because I believe the way we honor our parents in front of our kids goes a long way to say how our kids will honor us. If your parents are older and still alive like mine are, they need to know they matter, that they still have value, and patiently and graciously honor them. Tell them they matter. Tell them that they're valued. And you do this by showing them grace. Is this. 
It's about giving. As parents get older, the roles reverse. Those who provided and cared for now need to be cared for and need to be provided for. And this is the normal cycle of life, and this is the way I believe when I read through Scripture and I look at, you know, cross-culturally, I think this is the way we're supposed to live. Now, I know some of us are in that sandwich generation where we have young adult children or even, you know, adult children who we're still kind of responsible for and we're still… think that this is going to be a responsibility. It's the way we honor. I watch parents who step up so much, and they help and care for their adult children. They provide loans and gifts and housing and child care. And I wonder, <laughs> kids return that, that care and that provision back? Parents who took care of you and provided for you one day will be needing, taken care of. Maybe it's giving them your time. And I know that lives get busy, and we got our own kids and our own jobs and our own thing, and it's really easy not to spend time. There are times I feel so guilty for the lack of time I sometimes give my mom and dad, because I'm busy. It might be giving them patience, because they struggle mentally and physically and emotionally as they get older. Sometimes the parents get nicer as they get older, but sometimes they get meaner. And sometimes they do things and say things that will embarrass you. My dad does this all the time. That's when we need to give them the gift of patience, of patience. And sometimes it's just simple things, right? Help them shop, take them to appointments, do small repairs, update the place they live in, whatever. Are we willing to give that way? And it might even be the giving of financial resources. Now, we live in a world that's got, you know, good, you know, retirement savings and pensions that are so much better. So this isn't always a big deal. But for some, it will be a deal. And honoring is about giving. It's to provide for our parents as they get older on many levels. If anyone does not provide for his relatives, especially for his immediate family, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. That's pretty strong language. Adult children, that's our responsibility. They have given and sacrificed for us, and honor says that we need to give and sacrifice for them now. The Bible makes a strong connection between honoring God and honoring your parents, and one way we honor God is by the way we honor our parents. So the question is, how are you doing this, adults with your parents? Now, I just want to close by one last group, little bank shot here. Some of you are here today, and your moms and dads have passed away. You wonder, well, I don't have to honor them anymore. I think you do. I think we honor our parents forever. And I think that the best way, if your parents have passed away, that you can honor them is think of all of those godly values and principles and morals that they poured into your life. Even if they didn't have a real faith, but they brought the right principles, live by that wisdom, live by that guidance, live by those principles. That's a way we honor them. And if your parents were Christ followers, I believe the greatest way to honor them is to develop your own relationship with Jesus in a much deeper way. And one of the great ways we can honor parents, whether they're alive or not, is to take all of those great things that they poured into us, all of those principles, those values, and if they are Christ followers, all of that, you know, example, and pass it on to our children. It's such a great way to honor, whether they're alive or not. Honoring our fathers and mothers comes in different forms based on age and stage, even whether they deserve it or, have, or whether they've earned it. There's no exception. It will be different. But all of us, all of us are responsible to honor our mother and father because it makes life good and we live longer. That's what it says. So let me at, close by asking one simple practical question. This is it. What is the one thing you can do today to honor your mother? If she's still alive, what's that one simple thing today that you can do to honor your mother? I want all the moms to stand today. If you're a mom, whatever kind of mom you are, 
stand. Lots of moms here today. Let's pray a prayer of blessing, a prayer of blessing over all our moms today. Father God, thank You for these women who stand here today, who are maybe children and moms at the same time. Father God, I just thank You for our mothers, and none of them got it perfect. But so many of them did so many right things. Moms are the great sacrificers in families. Moms are those who seem to nurture and love their children. They're the ones who spend more time with their kids in most cases. Father God, we are thankful for these moms, and now we pray, pray a prayer of blessing on our moms. That the Lord, that you, Lord, would guide and keep them that you would watch over them and that you would bless them and that you would give them a sense of your pleasure because of what they have done and that they would find peace. Thank you for our mothers and thank you for these mothers today. And may your blessing, and may your blessing be upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this message. To hear it again or other messages, please visit us at lakesidechurch.ca.